Welcome to my ROH 13th anniversary pay-per-view. Um, I haven't really ever done a, a bit of a Ring of Honor pay-per-view that much before, but I was watching this pay-per-view tonight because it was 13th anniversary, and everybody said some more Joe was going to be on there. And I checked the show out tonight. It was hey, great show, I gotta say that. First kick off with Cedric Alexander versus Matt Sidal. I mean, you know, it's Evan Bourne, but uh, pretty much a great way to kick off the show. Um, I really enjoyed the match. The crowd was into it. With packed house and everything, and um, pretty much uh, the show. Pretty much an overall, uh, overall great match. Um, Sidal hitting the um, shooting star press at the end on Alexander. Very impressive match. Uh, pretty much after that, Alexander looked frustrated after the match. Pretty much went up and uh, shook his hand in and left out of the ring. And side, I picked up the first win. Uh, great opening to the show. Um, also, pretty much next, Mark Briscoe versus Moose. Which I don't know that much about Moose, but he is still somewhat kind of green and everything. And has been on a roll lately. But he beat uh, Briscoe, and it was uh, pretty much an overall good match with him. And I, I don't know that much about Moose. I don't know about Briscoe. I don't know that much about Moose, but... Uh, it was an overall, um, it was all a good match. Um, Briscoe did what he did to make this match good, but, um, I think it could go out better. It, it, it went out all right, and I think the crowd somewhat got into it. Um, pretty much a triple threat tag team match. Uh, Christopher Daniels and Kazarian, or Addiction, or Bad Influence, whatever tag team name they're going by these days, versus the Kingdom, Mike Bennett, and, um, Matt Tavern versus the Bullet Club. Bullet Club. Machine Gun Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows. But since Doc Gallows had uh, troubles at the airport because of snow and everything, he did not show up to the event. And because of that, pretty much uh, Carl Anderson came out saying he didn't need a partner and everything. He said he was at the Bullet Club on his side, so... He's with the Bullet Club and everything, so he didn't really need anybody's help and stuff. And the Bullet Club doesn't need a partner, so he did the match on his own as it pretty much the Kingdom attacked them. And the match then, so pretty much it was a two-on-two-on-one match in the Triple Threat Tag Team. Which, uh, Chris Daniels and Kazarian kind of helped out for a minute. I, I, I did find it odd, but funny when uh, the Kingdom did the, um, Twist of Fate and Swan Tom Bomb trying to go on like the Hardy Boys and stuff. Yeah, but I thought it was a pretty much overall... Great match ending up with uh, Tavern and Bennett hitting their finisher on Carl Anderson beating him since uh, pretty much he was the only guy that was there, didn't really have a tag team partner. So they got the win over um, the Bullet Club and Daniels and Kazarian, or Addiction, like I said. Bad influence, whatever tag team these guys are going by these days. So they picked up the win. Ryder Strongridge beat BJ Whitmer. Uh, Whitmer's kind of slow, if you ask me. Technical, but slow. But pretty much ended with Roderick Strong getting the, the um, win over B.J. Whitmer. It wasn't a lot of reaction for this match or anything. Mostly a lot of technical chain wrestling in this match. But it was overall good. And a strong pick with the win, which the crowd someone got into it. Um, ODB went against Maria. Or Can Maria Canellis, whatever name you want to call her. And she came out with her title. Or title of love, whatever belt it's called. And pretty much said she couldn't do the match against ODB as Briscoe's out there with her. Um, she couldn't do the match because she was pregnant. But Tavern, uh, but um, Mike Bennett came and attacked Jay, uh, Mark Briscoe. He attacked Mark Briscoe and pretty much she tried to jump ODB. But it was a kind of a crazy match. They were jumping all over the ring and everything with Tavern and Briscoe getting involved throughout the match. ODB pretty much um, was able to beat. Marie Canales, uh, well, there was so many ways. She was jumping out of the ring, cross bodies, everything. I didn't know where, what was going to go where. But she got the win over Maria, took that pink stuff off the title, and gave it back to the, pretty much back to Briscoe and everything. Because it pretty much held the title up. So it, it was um, it was what it was, and the crowd was into it as they pretty much um, liked ODB with Briscoes and, you know, doing whatever. Especially when they had that gun ring set, whatever chicken coop they did, where she goes to visit to them and stuff. Which I didn't even know ODB really was in Ring of Honor, but um, hey, she's there. She found a good match. AJ Styles went against ACH, uh, which is one of, one of my favorite matches of the night, by the way. Um, AJ Styles versus um, ACH. Like, holy shit, I thought he was going to the Styles Clash real early, but this is one of, like, one of the best matches of the night. Especially that corkscrew, like, 
backflip thing ACH did out of the ring. Whatever it was, some type of swing, boy, it was like nuts, and ACH was dodging a lot of AJ Styles moves as it pretty much was a counter fest, if you ask me. But, um, it pretty much ended with uh, AJ Styles and Styles Clash at the end of the match. Uh, the crowd went really nuts when Styles came out, because, you know, the Bullet Club and everything, and people were chanting AJ Styles and ACH. ACH looked like he was going to cry right after, but pretty much his emotion, and he hugged AJ Styles and got out of the ring. But Styles hit the AJ Styles hit the Styles Clash, won the match and everything, and pretty much, um, I'd like to see more of this. And this match probably was one of the best ones also on the card. I enjoyed that. But uh, pretty much one of my next favorite matches, probably was match of the night, was Red Dragon. Um, we also had um, Shania Bellas out there from MMA versus the uh, Young Bucks for the ROH Tag Team Championships. And holy shit, what a fucking super kick fest this was. My god, it, this match was all over the place. I couldn't tell who was going to do what out there. It was just insane. I thought the Bucks had it. Hitting the Meltzer driver outside of the ring. A little bit more bang, uh, a little more bang for your buck right there. You got Bobby Fish and Kyle Riley flying all over the place. Hell, uh, Sh Bowser got involved pulling the ref's leg out. I thought they were about to pull a double super kick on her and stuff. But, um, holy crap. The people just went nuts for the Young Bucks and everything. I liked when, um, pretty much, uh, Jackson pretty much, um, hit him and just did the suck it thing like that. And the crowd was like, suck it, suck it, suck it. And it, it was it was insane and chanting Young Bucks, but um, Red Dragon got the uh, Chasing Dragon finish and won the match. It was just so fast paced, so all over the place. It's like you have to go back and watch that match again just to know what to get it all out of your system. It, it was just that breathtaking of a match. Uh, that was probably one of my favorite ones of the night. I'll say that because then they had Rocky Romero on commentary, so I guess him and Trent Beretta are gonna be facing. Red Dragon for the titles next. Uh, Jay Leto went against Alberto El Patron. Um, what the hell, Del Rio, whatever. But I like him on the mic now, and pretty much, uh, you know, he's in, you know, he's in uh, ROH and Lucha Underground. Um, Patron, uh, not a great match from these guys. I did like that triple suicide, uh, pretty much triple um, suicide dive. Lethal did, and uh, pretty much the uh, Patron pretty much hitting those kicks out of nowhere. It was probably one of the best matches also on the card tonight, uh, but because uh, he had um, his arm going, but uh, Truth My Team pretty much got in and hit him with that book, and he hit with that book at the end, book at the end of the match, the Book of Truth with uh, Lethal hitting the Lethal Injection at the end, retaining the television title. I thought the real was really gonna go over with, it, and people had a big pop for the real Chang C C C C C, so that was big. Nigel McGinnis came out in commentary as the return of Samoa Joe happened. Samoa Joe came out as people chanted, Welcome back, welcome back. Joe says, um, Who says you can't come home? He says, and He talked about 13 years ago in a dingy old rec center in probably the worst neighborhood of Philly as he talked about how Ring of Honor started and now he's in Las Vegas and he talks about this was a movement, but now it's become a revolution. As the fans start chanting, Joe is gonna kill you and Fuck TNA, uh, a lot of fuck TNA chants. Um, Joe pretty much um, looked on, he talked about the main event, about four men put their bodies on line for that title in the back, the most coveted title in this company, the ROH champion, and he says he will become the Ring of Honor champion once again, because he says whoever wins this, their ass is there, is his. And he pretty much says, my name is Samoa Joe, and I am professional wrestling, he said, as he pretty much headed back to the back then. As the main event kind of start, pretty much started. Jay Briscoe versus Hanson versus Tommaso Ciampa versus Michael Elgin, ROH World Title, which uh, I enjoyed most of the match. Even though the end kind of was overbooked to the to the gills, I'll say that. Cause especially those guys in the red mask, the KRD hitting twist of fate and finishers all over the place, and then you got Ray Rowe coming out. It was very overbooked. And then Elgin and McGinnis, uh, McGinnis almost getting power bombed in the ring. The Simba tried to save him. So this match was really all over the place. A lot of overbooking at the end of the match. I think the crowd was into it at the end. Like it, it held interest a little, but I think the crowd was like, "What just happened?" Then after answering that Spinelli kid on Briscoe landing on the Simba and Elgin trying to get the, the break up the pin, but uh, Jay Briscoe. 
retain his title, and then pretty much after that, Samoa Joe came back out, looked at Elgin, and headed back, to, looked out, and pretty much went up to Jay Briscoe's face, and, um, uh, pretty much held the title up. I guess they're going to be fighting next for the um, the title for the World Heavyweight Championship for the ROH title. But um, I enjoyed this um, Ring of Honor pay per view. I, you know, I really should try to keep up more reviews. I like I'm watching more of NXT now and stuff like I've been doing. But you know, I'm trying to get more of the Ring of Honor thing, watch more of that. And I know what it is and, and stuff. But I had to watch this pay per view, the 13th anniversary, pretty much uh, the first and everything it is. So. Overall, I enjoyed the show. Uh, my probably one of my favorite matches of tonight were the Young Bucks versus Red Dragon. Probably one of my favorite matches, and ACH versus AJ Styles. So I really did enjoy the show. So once again, you know, it's me, it's me, the H W D coming here with the news and the reviews. You know what I am. You know what I do. So it's like me and the Nate, and uh, we're pretty much done with this review for uh, ROH. And I know it's the first and everything, so since I kind of run with this joke a lot, I think I'm going to just, hold on a second, I wish I would have had it set up before I uh, start the review, but I just wanted to make sure this to um, show off. Yeah, watch out for the Raw review tomorrow. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a video of that tomorrow. But uh, like I said, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about the IRH pay-per-view, man. It was big show tonight. The Bullet Club, of course, we had it now tonight, man. So watch out for that. Bullet Club, everything. It was a um, big show. But I'm uh, pretty much going to end it right here. I will see you guys later. Unfortunately, this uh, thing isn't going to work. Because pretty much, as if somebody is still the first, probably may show up as a different date, but. The first, March 1st is pay-per-view. So that is the first of the month. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Let's be spot.